Right, so real quick, right? Housekeeping uh, of um, the league, we have okay, so we are watching IPIC. IPIC, I think it's a Russian or Eastern European player. I don't, I don't know if I played against them. I think I played in the tournament with this person there, and they are, they're insane. They're insane. They're an insane survivor. They're an insane killer. And they're playing, like, a really mean blight. Uh, you might notice that they have some really silly perks, because there's perk bans. That's why they're on Gearhead or Brutal. And they're gonna... Ch they're, 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 they're playing against a team that has some of the best players that I know of. I'm, I'm not familiar with Kexo, so sorry, I'm sure they're great. But V1 is an insane blight. Um, he actually killed them. Uh, with two gents left in the previous round. So, yeah, V1, insane player. Granout is one of the scariest survivors I've ever seen in my life. The way he pads is out of this world. And Zaka, Zaka might just be the best player in the world. When people ask me, oh, what is the best player that you've played against? Zaka, I played against his killer. Have I? I'm not sure. But I've witnessed his killer a lot, but I've played against him as a survivor. And catching this fucker seriously feels like a like one of those final side quests on an RPG that's supposed to be impossible. He is generally one of the best players in the world. But you wouldn't think that. Let's watch this chase. Uh, keep in mind of what I just said, okay? Zaka, I don't know if he's like five or six or seven thousand hours. Insane player. One of the best players ever. He's, he's just about to go down like he has 500 hours. And th that is not to say that IPIC is not playing well, okay? Like, keep in mind, IPIC is a another insane fucking player. Look at this. Look at this. He gets that. So, yeah. Luckily, he doesn't have any of the super nasty add-ons, so he has to. He has a bit of cooldown here. Uh, Zaka is trying to play this as safe as possible, okay? Keep in mind. Keep in mind, you might be like, oh, you shouldn't have dropped that pallet. You should have played around. He's playing this as safe as possible because he knows that leaving the pallet up is going to lead to this guy doing some kind of hug tech and destroying him. So he's playing as safe as possible. And this is the distance he makes here. And he has to play around here. Dead. 30 second chase. This fuck- Zaka would fucking run you or run me. Zaka's Spanish. Uh, he used to be from Tem Eternal. Uh, he, this guy would run you for five fucking minutes. Uh, or until his hands went fucking numb. And he lasted 30 seconds against this killer. Uh, obviously, he's gonna go on the hook after a little bit. Um, team tried to buy time, but they couldn't. After he gets on hook, get what's gonna happen, chat. He gets chased. He does really good. He plays it super safe. Doesn't matter. Goes down in a second. Then after that, he gets on the hook. Killer gets a pop. They have to do their best. Uh, they, they hold him as much as possible. Uh, yeah, try to protect him. Killer is absolutely confident that they can tunnel. Dead heart that missed there, sadly. And Zach is dead. So, like, this blight just made this... Survivor that I'm telling you is one of the best survivors in the world. Look like an absolute fucking beginner. Uh, but what what happens next is even more astounding. Okay, so now despite their best efforts to protect their teammate, he's dead, and despite their best efforts to do gens, which they have, this was a really tough match so far. There's two gens left. Okay, and they're about to pop the fourth, and the gens that are left are horrible. They are horrible. Look, look at this. This, if you have a killer with pop, this should put fear in your heart. The main gen that he's looking at is gonna go, and the gens that are left are all on the same side. Look at this. So he immediately goes here, because he knows the survivors are gonna try to break this. And the, the next chase that's gonna happen is gonna blow your mind. I'm gonna unmute. On the win condition being so tough to attain here. Um, and it's still gonna probably end up good to turn out good. It shows I pick here, I feel like to still have some confidence if they're the I don't know if they're the one. He pops a gen. And now he chases Grenout. As I told you earlier, Grenout is an insane player that moves. It's it's um, like I swear to god, if this was a single player game, I would think he's a cheater. If this was a single player game, I would think that he's like playing at like half speed and then speeding it up in post, like they like they do in racing games. You know cheaters in racing games? Same thing, he moves so unbelievably precise, you would think he's a Gran Turismo player. And I don't need to say anything else, you're gonna see for yourself. Absolutely, yeah. And, and keep in mind, the killer is no beginner, he's insane. This killer is one of the best killers you're ever gonna see in your life. 
we do see on the left side we won just got reset so the survivors are aware that ipic is in a very dominant position here and takes control over the gameplay and every single reset is going to take some time. keep in mind that the survivor will sometimes walk to make the killer lose bloodlust if they're not using their power look at this movement repositions from the worst place to the better one during cooldown not easy Conf confidently walks through the pallet several times never gets caught in the wrong place hugs everything perfectly forces the killer to guess that the pallet was going to come down check spots I don't think you can understand just how absolutely insane those five seconds were if, you, if, if you're new to this game. But I think that even if you are, you must understand that every single, every, every single pause he did there is a studied, methodical uh, strategy to know that, okay, if I see him on the right, I go to the left. If I see him on the left, I go to the right. With so little information. So little information, okay? Let's watch it again. Hello, and now everything is turning. Elysium. Killer oh, swings, oh, uses the cooldown to confidently go through it, stuns him, animation plays out weird, doesn't matter. Now, unfortunately, he's very isolated, so this results in a pretty much an avoidable hit, and he uses overcome to get out. That is an insane chase. That is an insane chase from Grenout, right? Unfortunately, what happens next is that the killer repositions and then catches him a bit off guard in a few seconds. Yeah, I think he was a little bit done yeah. with this chase. Yeah. It might not even notice that man kid Grenout definitely uploading a YouTube video later. This is how I'm playing. That, that is insane from the killer as well, by the way. This time, I think it's going to... So what's going to happen next is that the survivors are going to do their absolute best. And I mean their absolute darndest. They did the gen in main. You see that there's one gen left. Now they have the three gens that are right next to each other in this part of the map. I haven't seen this exact part, so let's just react to it together, okay? Remember, after this hook, it's another pop. Uh, I lied. I have seen what comes next, and it's also unbelievable. So he checks this gen. Bit of progress, not worth popping in his eyes. He sees a bird fly off there, and he gets the noggin thinking. He's checking the other gen, sees nothing, and he's gonna go back and pop that. And he remembers the bird, and he knows that there's something sus here. He kicks this. Don't build up too much and momentum. he or will now guess the where the survivor is just based on the ones that come right intuition survivor uses primbers doesn't matter gets hits anyway from their sales here that could work into your advantage but you at least find kexo here you get the first m1 they're gonna try and just hold shift w in the middle killer understands that so once she reaches the middle chase. it might be a difficult chase Pref prefers to stay on this area uh this is one of several ways you can force hits here and the survivor did so well they were so patient but no matter what you do there you risk getting hit uses life after vaulting pallet to make distance and re reaches shack with absolutely no safety throws an insane flashbang that prevents the killer from going through which is what they would have done to get the hit forcing them to go away and now during that brief time you crouch to make yourself quieter and then get out and reach middle where you are safe this is an insane play from v1 who's also a blight player and knows exactly what the blight is thinking forces the killer to retreat back and kick the gens absolutely nutty so far that little thing there was insane unfortunately this survivor gets caught a little bit in the open and he would be dead on hook if he goes down fast survivors never want to get ca get caught in the three gens so they're not going to play super super safe this is the last bit i've seen of this game until the end so let's see what happens. Uh, a bit of a 50-50 on that pallet guess if you want to watch it again. Sad, but she doesn't go down, which is good. Uh, resetting there. Nancy doing her absolute best to get out of there before it's too late. Walking to get her Sprimbers back. Sorry, uh, Lithe back. Absolutely nothing you can do. You have a killer that is fast, lethal. And can cover the very small um, perimeter of the three gen. So that went bad. Now here, please tell me if you believe that these survivors have a chance to win this. Do you think the survivors have any chance to win this? 
Honestly, I would have told you that they had zero chance to win this the moment Zaka died. Well, yeah, that's what I felt too. In fact, I skipped through this because I thought, okay, now he's going to kill them all. But I shouldn't have skipped because something interesting happens. We have another pop. Uh, honestly, pff, at, at this point, the, 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 if the killer sits in the middle, he can see and hear all gens. He's now 100% aware that they're probably going to heal each other or shortly heal each other. The positioning of the pallet there made him get stuck, but that could have been a hit. Uh, this survivor is in the very unfortunate position here. But the killer doesn't wanna doesn't wanna make the trade free, so he wants to interrupt this perhaps. Uh, there we see leader making the unhook a bit faster. Killer wants to outweigh the 10 seconds, get another pop if possible, put more pressure on them. It's not possible. Survivors do a good job greasing themselves and and getting through him. Keep in mind that they are absolutely locked in here with him. Oh, he tried. Okay, what he tried to do there, by the way, was quite smart. Like, he tried to... He expected the Blight to swing at this point, and he crouched. Why did he crouch? It's because when you crouch, your hitbox is a bit smaller against an incoming swing from a from a Blight. It's similar to what happens with Billy or Demo. Not quite as useful, but still it can help you dodge. So he was hoping that right now he would dodge. Uh, the killer, though, is incredibly patient, takes advantage of his double speed add-ons, and he's going to play the bump logic playstyle. What is the bump logic playstyle? Uh, is that what I call it? I think so. Yeah, they, they don't try to do qu crazy flex or, or anything fancy. They just bump from place to another, place to another until they have enough speed to absolutely overwhelm you. So yeah, at this point, he tried to do some flex, but it, it, like with a killer so experience, you're never gonna get this. You would be really lucky if he got dodged. Second hook for Granout. Killer very confident that the gens are not done enough and he can get the pop and this person's on hook. Gen with most progress is seemingly at 30 or 40%. Hitting great skill checks, that 1% might make a difference. Uh, by the way, Kexo... Oh, he has decisive. Oh my god! Oh my god, I didn't see- Okay, we don't see it from the killer PUB, but the the Nancy player, uh, V1, went into a locker with decisive, as in, if you grab me, maybe we finish the Shen, maybe I exchange, uh, or maybe I use life and get out with that and give up uh, Gren out in the basement. So she wanted to get grabbed, but the killer was like, nah, I'm just gonna go pop the gen. So when the survivor sees that they don't get grabbed with decisive, then they have to come out of the locker. Here we go. Yep. <laughs> that miss probably was huge for the survivors. This is where Brutal might be really useful. Because it makes them, it gives them less time. Killer prefers instead to just uh, pop the gen and maybe go for the person that on hook now. Person that on hook is not quite spotted yet. Nancy gets the attention instead. And there's the target. Keep in mind. I don't know how the hell the survivors are alive at this point. And I'm going to give you a minor spoiler. They will complete one of these gens. Also rough because the resources are missing. Oh, you got resources missing. I think this pallet that we just saw Kexo take over is, I think, one of the last... This is unbelievable. Left, this is, I'm, what? I know. So I know. I can't believe it. I originally was watching this and I skipped ahead. The way we see Kexo going to go down. And I saw a gen completed and I couldn't understand how. No, it's not going to buy enough time for this. The question now becomes as far as what sort of play... Do I don't... I can't imagine what, what kind of comms they're having right now. That's crazy, dude. Oh, the, the, he doesn't buy the bait. He sees the ace. Ace is dead on hook, so he's a really juicy target. The reason he has... um. Uh, the Nia perk to crouch and walk faster is precisely to do those dodges I told you about. Springburst from Nia. Oh my god, dude. He pops one of the gens. They are rightfully splitting in two of them. Ace knows his time here is limited. What's he gonna do? 
survivors will we see a magical edge map performance it seems to be like that granite and i pick the uh, personal 1v1 number 2 we could say here, we have seen Granout's insane performance earlier <laughs> on that pallet, it's not going to work out this time, but still a good run for the fact that he was so Killer good. knows that this gen could be popping, look, so he, kn he knows that he might not have time to pick up on hook. It's possible that Granout has chose that spot because there's no hook nearby. Oh, really interesting... Um, Tech there. I feel like it here, especially at the rate things are going. Someone's now going to need to either make the decision to stick to a gen while injured, or go get up, grin out, and try and maybe force. Okay, a bit of a misplay from the killer, I suppose. There. Job of patrolling the gens, getting those pop kits, and this is really where for I pick with that build. These last Someone gets picked up. Could be very valuable. You get that additional pop. Oof. Oh, that's so here. smart from the survivors. Get, get closer and closer. I wouldn't want to play around too much more without being able to get a pop kick. On this pride rock gen. Oh, this one's far too. Uh, Grenau got grabbed at the window. We didn't see that, but. This gen's getting finished. Killer drops the survivor. Oh, Spirit Burst used perfectly to dodge that. Uh, killer kicking for the 2.5%. Oh my gosh. Oh, the patience. Okay, survivors here, no. Oh. All right. Time out. We need 20 minutes to explain what just happened. All right. So survivors know that the person that they're playing against is from the same region. They have good ping. If you do this in a public match against a McDonald's Wi-Fi killer, this is going to fail. But look at his positioning. He's not on the pallet. He's not next to... He's, he's quite a bit far from the pallet. Enough that if he sees him swing, he can immediately toss it. And that will protect him while simultaneously buying as much time for the team as possible. Stalling as much as possible, right? And if he came from the left, then you would need to reposition and probably, you know, make some kind of make some kind of play on that. However, the killer, knowing this, does uh, what some people call the V1 tech. It's named after V1, which is the Nancy in this lobby. It's basically a trick where you, I think, you look down, you bump into an object, and then you do a follow-up lethal rush where you can already hit someone at a fraction of a second. So you're gonna see that the killer. He's going to bump into that corner and immediately come with a lethal swing. And it's really, really deadly. You see? Bop! And bam! It, it's, it's almost like he hits you on his first brush, which is obviously insanely, insanely powerful. Unbreakable is happening now. So that girl can pick herself up in 24 seconds. And Nancy knows what... She knows what the assignment is to take him far away. Jukes there, faking going back. Uh, unbreakable happens. She picks herself up. Still has spimbers in a few seconds. We'll need to drop this pallet to guarantee that spimbers. Putting additional pressure. Now you have two players, one on either side of your slug. So she's gonna pick up and have them uh, and have uh, spimbers right after, which allows her to stop the regression of this gen, which went from 90 something to like 80. If you get virtual, a killer right now is trying to hold all of these limes and it's impossible. He probably doesn't suspect them. Oh, no, he does. Last gen gets done. It's not that the Z wall carry chat, it's that the killer knows that time is against him. He's really worried about the gem popping. So if the killer knew the time was on his side, he chases you in that Z-Wall for an extra 10 seconds and downs you. But he wanted, you know what I mean, like survivors play this extremely well. Everything they've put up in place, they actually got it done. We want it's going to receive a backslap here going to stay in the trial most. Now we've seen some blood there. And we see another very common high-level tournament strategy. In this situation, right, the worst thing that could happen is that the Nia goes down, the killer quickly recovers, and then, you know, straight lines it to the other side of the map to catch the ace, who is surely trying to open again and get out. So what she's trying to do here is go into a logger, forcing the killer to grab her out, drop her to the ground, which is a much lengthier animation, and then buy, hopefully enough time, for the ace, who's still injured, to go open a gate, maybe last second. Here on the left side, 
blocker grab, make sure that there's no chance for a slug. Ipic has to pick that if he wants to prevent the pickup onto we. Now, as it just so happens, this killer, uh, sorry, this survivor has resilience, which will save you. Uh, it's nine percent. Twenty seconds to open again. The formula is a bit different. It will save you. It will save you like a second and a half. Okay. Do you think that he gets out? I'm gonna tell you right now. Against, I think against any other killer in the game <laughs> that that doesn't have like a teleport right next. I think you don't get out. Uh, you you do get out. Sorry, the killer would never catch you. Keep in mind, Nia is being dropped right now, and he's already like twenty percent of the way. So we have about fifteen seconds. One but Granout could make it out and we even see resilience. Maybe if he hits some skill checks, <laughs> Kappa. There's no skill checks on the gates. Yeah, and you, as long as they don't go straight <laughs> drop this door, which it doesn't look like they did, that's gonna buy Granout. <laughs> and he killed them all. <laughs> he got him with the last rush. With the speediest double, a uh, double, you know, uh, add-on for speed, with the edge of the edge of the swing, <sighs> dude. This is why I hate blind. This is why I hate blind. Now you could argue, well, uh, duh, odds blind needs to be powerful because these survivors were the best survivors in the world, which they pretty much, you know, could be for for the sake of the argument. But how how? How is this killer on the same video game as the other killers? Do you understand how much you would need to... Like, you could never change the game. Like, if you made maps smaller, that would be okay for Trapper. That might be okay for Clown. Then you would make every game exactly like this for Blight. And if you made the game even harder, so it's very difficult for Blight, then for those killers, it becomes impossible. As long as a killer this insane exists... I don't know, man. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. Uh, now I can show you the rest of the bits, but it's a very slow process where the, um, where the survivors were, you know, found one by one and hooked. Now I'm going to tell you something even crazier, okay? In the previous match, Virtual, the blight player, he beat the other survivors even, even worse than this. He beat them with several gens left. So these survivors had already won. They didn't need to do any of this. They, like, the moment they pop four gens or five gens, they had already won. Yeah, in fact, the moment they pop three or four gens, they out of the one. So all of this thing that we saw of them struggling and doing, they didn't need to do all of this. They could have just sat still and get down. They still did it because, you know, they have a competitive spirit, I suppose. Good for them and good for the showcase. But oh my God, man. Oh my gosh, dudes. What do you think of that?